let's get this show on the road. So um, I'm going to be sending an invite to uh, Bellator fighter Stephen Hill if he comes up. I haven't really done an Instagram live for a long time. I'm assuming you guys can hear me. But yeah, I'm um, going to be doing a uh, an Instagram live with Stephen Hill. So yeah, let's get the ball rolling. Hey. Oh, sugar. Easy, brother. How you doing, all right? Good, do you? How do I look? Do you look all right? Yeah, mate, you look fresh. <laughs> Got that fucking trim going. I'm ashamed. I'm disappointed that you shaved the tash off, though. I'm going to go right back, brother. Just for yeah. you. Yeah, oh, mate, that was the, the selling point got... for me. I was like, oof. You look that beautiful in real life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how you been anyways, all right? Yeah, all good, man. Good. Everything's going well. <clears throat> mate, I can't complain. I'm... Four weeks out. Getting ready, getting sharp, getting in shape. Mate, it's all the cliche shit, but I do feel really good. I do, you know, everyone goes, yeah, I feel deadly, I feel fast, I feel, I do feel good. Oh, mate, well, it would have been, it would, it would have been um, awful if you had turned around and just gone, no, nah, mate, I feel awful, like, this is the worst I've ever felt, this camp's been awful, just like selling an absolute shit show, do you know what I mean? You're obviously not going to say that, are you? But you're going to be genuine at the same time. Maybe we should do that. These stupid Italians are all jumping on uh, these posts and trolling me. Maybe we should say I'm having a terrible camp. I've got the Rona. I've, I've had a terrible camp. Absolutely shocking. Oh, mate. Freaking, nah, you'll be all right. I know you're going to be all right. And uh, obviously, I'm assuming you're looking forward to um, competing in the next sort of four weeks. Mm. Yeah, I can't wait, mate. I'm buzzing. It's like Christmas Day for me. I get the shut these <laughs> up again. Yeah. Wait, they're the tr I'll tell you what, I actually I actually rate them like they're they're the trolls, man. They're like trolls. Um they're best trolls ever. The English, they don't they don't back us at all. But, no. The Italians they go hard, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about the dog. <laughs> That's all right, brother. I'll probably be coughing my guts up at some point. I'm still a little bit under the weather, but, you know, we've got to get things done, right? Were you, are you pregnant or hungover? <laughs> Both, mate. <laughs> I don't even drink alcohol, mate, at all. Like, So it's going to have to be the other one. Good. Like, yeah. yeah, fuck the alcohol, man. It's no good for me. I'm trying, you know, when you've got to maintain this body. It's hard, isn't it? Not the hard, bro. <laughs> hard, I know what you're saying. Um, I want so, to be able to say. Yeah, come on, brother. Sorry. Um, so you're two and nine Bellator pro record of seven and eight, um, or it might have gone up now. I might be a little bit off on that. I do apologise. Um, uh, so talk to me about your first fight and uh, within Bellator and like how it felt to be out there. Because obviously before we spoke, you were just lining up to have your first pro fight for Bellator. So how was that all? How was that whole experience for you? Hard to put into words, really. Because um, every fight always wants to get to UFC or Bellator or or one. Do you know what I mean? So when I was finally I got signed and I was there, oh mate, amazing. Felt very, very, very uh, grateful, but also like I can't find the right words for it. But just felt amazing, mate. Felt very grateful. Felt felt um, yeah, just felt good to be there and and but it was very. It was, I was very nervous. Like I get quite nervous sometimes with all that stuff, and I was I overthink. And am I ready for it? Am I ready for it? So it was nice to get the first one out of the way and realise that I am ready for it. And these guys ain't ready for me. That's what mm. we've got to worry about. It's not a fight. It's a fight under any lights, any stadium, any country. If any fans booing you, cheering you, the fight's a fight. But you have for you, you have to be ready in your own mind. You have to be strong in your own mind and. Then two fights really helped me with that. You know, the mm. first one, I had a couple of thousand Italians booing me. The second one, it wasn't too bad. And the third one's going to be even better. Yeah. No, I think that's, the, um, that's something that people don't always take into account, you know, like, especially people that are maybe competed at a lower level, um, sort of, you know, within their local town or just even like in England or whatever. They don't think about going somewhere else and then having to sort of fight in front of fans that are obviously going to be hostile. I don't actually think a lot of people take that into consideration and how like nerve-wracking that can be to 
because <laughs> obviously like yourself right you're used to more competing locally and people cheering for you when mm. you're coming out mm. to then go over um to, to italy and then have like a thousand people booing you you're kind of like all right i'm not used to this but fuck it let's go anyways do you know what i mean let's give it a good go anyways for anyone to say that it doesn't get you like doesn't get you emotionally or get you hyped is a lie a liar trust me you feel it like when they're booing you and uh, but then they're cheering you in the end it's it's uh it's cool man it is cool but I'm really, I, don't, I don't care for anything i don't care they boo me cheer me in france I don't, i'm ready man i'm ready i'm i can't wait for this I can't wait for this what um adjustments did you make between like your first fight and your second fight because like in my opinion your second fight you, you i could see like a difference in your performance level and, and maybe even like your confidence you seemed more like at, at home it sounds stupid it's a weird thing to say but that's just like the perception i got from watching is like you seemed so much more comfortable in that second fight compared to your first fight and like if you made any adjustments even in your camp and stuff like that to be more prepared for that that second uh bout to be honest with you i didn't make any adjustments we just i just worked harder I always work hard, but I worked even harder. I was running more, grappling more, striking more, working on myself, working on my, my mental as well, mate. You know, that's mm. a, that's another thing. You know, um, got better people in my life now. Um, got rid of some toxic people in my life, and yeah. just getting better every day, um, bit by bit, chipping away, mate, chipping away. You know, just, I felt. A lot more at home I felt in the second fight I felt a lot more at home um, I remember one time I grappled in the O2 and didn't grapple very well didn't get the decision and um, I was so comfortable backstage at the grappling event in the O2 and I was too comfortable and I felt like that in uh, Dublin for this fight and I was starting to worry I was like oh am I a bit too comfortable but then when I got in there I just it was just another day another day in the office for me I felt good the first one was really hard because I had a lot of pressure of the first we I come you we're from the same place we come from it's the it's a seaside town it's the back arse of nowhere really mm. no one's really done anything like that before so it was a big thing for me and I feel like that just um it, it weighed on me a bit and so in the second one I didn't really have it I've, well I've done that now yeah, you know I'm gonna go there and express myself, and I was put on a clinic in the second fight. I didn't I didn't really even get to see my striking, and my striking's high level. Um, mm. We're gonna see that in this fight. This guy, this guy just thinks I'm gonna grapple with him, and that's all I am as a grappler. Well, he's uh, he's in for a hard night, mate. I'll tell you that now. He's in for a hard night. Are you thinking sometimes like with people like this have proven a point to an extent where it's like. All right, let's have a little stand up for a bit. Right, I might be able to take you down easy and grapple you up, but let's have a little stand up just to prove a point. If you think I'm gonna stand there and grapple with you, I'll show you how good my fucking striking is. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes yes, Jay, and sometimes no. Sometimes I'm a little bit stubborn. I'm like, no, I won't. Why have I got to show you anything? I'm that mm. good in wrestling. You try and stop it. Do you know what I mean? Oh well. Yeah. No, you're good at grappling, so fuck it. We stand up. No, I'm gonna. I'll just do what I want to even more. It makes me even more stubborn. And I don't care if it takes me 10 takedowns to get him down. I will get him down. He's big. Yeah. He's tall. He's training in SBG, some really nice gym. We're in this gym that's being refurbed in a minute. It's like, mm. it's a bit like Rocky IV when Rocky goes to Russia, trains him in stone. <laughs> I don't care, mate. I'm, I don't care the situation I'm training. I don't care where he's training, what he's got with all these, you know, all these flashy shit. I respect him. I know he's a good guy, but I just I want this win more than anything else. Every, he's, I'll think about him every single day. I think about it first thing I wake up, last thing at night is him. I just think about taking him apart every day, every day, chipping away at him. Any, any, it's, it's going to be violent. Vi that's what I want: is violence, beautiful violence. I can't say where it's going to go, just because. I'm ready everywhere, do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, think, I think that's a good thing, though, bro, like, in, in all honesty, is that there's, 
it seems like there's not much of an ego there from you. It's like, do you know what? The most important thing is just to get the win. Mm. How it happens is <clears throat> relevant. Like, we'll, we'll assess it on the night. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. We're going to have some striking. If we need to be striking, then sweet. And if the knockout comes, sweet. If I can get the takedown, I'll take him down. And I'll sub him and do what I've got to do. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like the win's the most important thing. And I think sometimes, especially in fighting, um, we've seen it with, with high-level fighters in, in other aspects, like in the UFC and whatever, where they'll deliberately make a point of like, no, I'll go, I'm going to stand and trade with you. And then they end up kind of um, not appealing to their strongest assets or whatever, because they're so, they're like, nah, this guy says I can't stand up. So yeah, let's, let's do that for yeah. Why get you like, Yeah. Why, why get drawn into that? Why get drawn mm. into that? Use what got you to the dance, mate. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm good at, I'm good at, dragging you down to deep waters and mauling you and drowning you. You know what I mean? Mm. But also, I can strike. I can strike with the best of them. Was, you know, up and down the country, I've struck with the best, some of the best strikers in the country and I hold my own. You know what I mean? So, I'm just, man, I'm just going to go in there and, and do, my, do my thing and the win's the most important thing. I'm not going to get drawn into anything, you know. I'm just going to be slick. Hands are going to be high and, uh, like this guy said, I can wrestle bears, let alone humans. But um, mm. yeah, have fun, mate. Have fun. This is, mate. We're lucky. I'm so lucky to do this. You know what I mean? I am so it's lucky. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. It's madness, bro. Like, yeah. When when you think about where where you're coming from and that, like, it is honestly mad to be sitting here chatting with you and going. Um, I'm, wow, I'm lucky. Fuck? I'm lucky. Like, obviously, you've got the talent and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? And the you've done the hard work, like. Yeah. It's, there's a part of that, but at the same time, sometimes you've got to pinch yourself and go, what the fuck? Like, how am I here? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's yeah. mental. 100%. Also recognise the hard work you put in every day, daily. Mm. You, know what I mean? you are lucky, but also the hard work you put in day in, day out, the graft you put in. Do you know what I mean? I love yeah, this game. And... I love this life. I love the competition. Um, yes, Toby, what's up? Um, yeah, no, it's good, man. It's good life. I and can't. you don't want it taken away either, do you know what I mean? Like, just by getting well, complacent or whatever. I'll never get complacent, man. This is, Mate, this is all I know. It's all I know is to train hard. Train hard, train hard. I'm going to train hard until my body can't anymore. And, yeah. And, and then I'll find something else and I'll just kick everyone's ass in jiu-jitsu or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep um, I'll keep training jiu-jitsu to try and get the hours in to try and make it a bit more competitive yeah. next time. Yeah, good, man. <laughs> good, man. <laughs> One day, maybe, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking, I wish. Um, so, what are your plans? Um, obviously, you're going to be um, fighting in Paris next. Like, what are your plans getting down there? Uh, when are you planning on going down there? Uh, who are you bringing from your team and stuff like that? Because obviously, we've touched on sort of how you're looking at uh, mm. um, sort of the predictions for the fight. We've kind of touched on that. You're, you're happy with going either way, stand up, wrestle, don't matter, get the win. But like, what's the what's the plan and the build up? Where when are you looking to be in Paris and who are you bringing with you and all that? Okay. So we usually fly around three four days before. I, I um, assume we're flying again. Um, so Friday night this fight. So they will probably be flying out on like Tuesday. Uh, I'll take Alex Salisbury out with me, my head coach, the big troll. Mm -hmm. The sexy, uh, the sexy orc here come with me, and um, we go out there, and and then the real fun begins. Um, I say real, real fun, disgusting, just cutting all the weight and and making making work weight and being a skinny little skinny little lad for a couple of days, and then refeed and kick some ass. Yeah, that must be because um, obviously your first fight was at um, middleweight, I think, wasn't it? And now you've done you've done two at welter. No, no, the first one was uh, like catch weight, it was like 82. Oh, just okay. like, yeah. like, this last one was well away, this one's well away. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I can't, I can't wait. It's interesting. Do you prefer, with like, if you could pick the ideal weight category, where, where would you prefer to be sitting? Or doesn't matter, just fucking uh, diet? There was like an 81. You'd be more comfortable there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd still have to cut a little bit, but it wouldn't be nowhere near as bad. The 81 would be perfect, but that's it's not going to happen, mate. They ain't going to 
change that anytime soon, but it's all good. We, we, we moved. Um, on. Touching on, because um, obviously you said Alex is uh, like your head coach and that. With your, um, with your camps, like your fight camps, do you tailor them to the opponent now or is it still like we're just going to go with the game, we're going to put the rounds in, we're going to do the training? Or is Alex and yourself like now looking at opponents and kind of what elements they might be strong in and then tailoring your camp around that? Mm. Yeah, of course. We we have a look and we see where they're good and where where we think there's holes and where we can lay traps. And yeah, we'll definitely go over it. And, you know, it's difficult, difficult because now where we're at now, everyone's good everywhere. So it's hard to make certain game plans. Do you know what I mean? But, mm. but you do, you do have like little things you think about and you want to do. And we're trying out and stuff like that. Yeah. We definitely have some, some plans, but we've not got plan A and plan B. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F. Do you know what I mean? We've got loads you know, we, we can do anything. And for me, I always go into, like, sharpen your skills daily. Get better every day and be ready for anything. You know what I mean? Mm. Almost like you're riding a wave. You don't know what wave's coming. Big wave, big wave, ride it. Do you know what I mean? Just don't crash. Be smooth, flow. And, but, um, yeah, that's it, man. I'm doing my thing daily, you know. Getting better yeah. every day. I feel like every camp, I level up. Like, I look back at them two fights and I'd, I'd beat that Steve now. I'd kill him now, you know? I'd just get better every day. Sometimes I pinch myself and I'm like, fuck, you're so, so good. Yeah. So that <laughs> cracks me up, though. It's like, you've got, um, I suppose when you look at, again, like how you've progressed and your performances, I, I think that's a good mentality to have, too. Because you look back and you go, I've smashed the old version of me, like, because I'm so much better now and I'm more dedicated and so on. And I think that's a credit to the hard work that you are putting in where you can. Because some people, like, can they can be where you are now and they've actually got some shit up because they've taken their foot off the gas or whatever. So I think it's good and a credit to your mindset to be like, let's keep grinding, let's keep getting better, let's keep delivering, let's perfect these little things. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the mentality of a, a black belt in jiu-jitsu is that, like, fine tuning of all the little details rather than being like, oh yeah, I've got my black belt now. Don't need to like train anymore. I can smash anyone, whatever. Like, no, it's about keeping keep like chipping away at those little little details. Chipping away and keep getting better and you can never be you can never be too good. You can always learn something. A new new angle and a new a new you know, a new way to do anything. And hmm. I, I, mate, I'm always learning, I'm always getting better. These guys that think they're better than everyone else and they can never learn from anyone else. It's the wrong mindset. And for me, going back to why I push so, push so much, it's because I have to mentally, for me, like if I'm not training very hard, like, it's like, but if I'm training really hard, it's for my mental, it's really good. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I believe in myself more and more because of all the work I'm putting in all the time and I, I'm, been into so many camps, so many different camps, so many different guys, and they say this, I'm doing that, and I'm doing this, and I'm watching them, I'm watching these guys for the camp, and not even training that hard, they're taking rest rounds, and I'm not resting for shit, you know what yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just push, I'm pushing and pushing and pushing, uh, in, my, in my whole heart, I know, on fight night, all the hard work's done, I can't do anything else, can't do anything else, and I don't want that, I don't want to carry anything else going in, any doubts, any worries, thinking, fuck, did I, did I do enough? God, you know what I mean? Mm. Lifted the stones, turned them all over, that old sand, wherever it is, done everything I can, you know? Yeah, I think that's... Um, I can do, I'm going to do it. I can't worry about what he's doing, can't worry mm. about where he's training, who he's training with, the SBG, like, I can't, you know, whatever, mate, I don't care. When it's mm. me and you locked in there, it's me versus you. And everyone's good for a round. Yeah. Everyone's good for a round, trust me. And then my cardio, my pace, my pressure. Yeah, break. Cool, that's some loud little bits of work going on, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> break. Um, so when you, you obviously compete, it's quite, quite a high-pressure situation. How do you... Um, 
how do you deal with that? Like, have you got any things in place? Like, sounds really stupid, but for me, like, I'm not that I'm, there's different levels here, but whenever I'm doing something that I feel that's like quite high pressure for me, I've got a weird thing where I chew chewing gum and it just seems to relax me. So I don't know, like, if you've got anything, maybe it's a mental game for me on that. Like, beat up my like, chew some chewing gum. Just beat up my Go, go and say that. Go on. No, I'm joking. Um, no, mate, it's, uh, don't worry about the level. Everyone feels pressure. It doesn't really matter about the level. But it's, I, chewing, chewing gum is good, mate. I'm uh, thinking back. I don't know, really. I just keep my mind busy and stay positive and Yeah. I listen to some music and shit and do my thing and it's hot, mate. It's so hard. I can't really sit here and tell you like how you deal with the pressure because it's fucking awful. Mm. It's fucking awful. I was at a show last night. A small, small show in Brian. Good show. But you can see all the fighters backstage. They feel all that pressure, that horrible pressure of waiting around, the waiting game of waiting to get in there. Horrible, horrible. And everyone deals in their own way. Some guys go quiet. Um, I like an intense warm up, like to get real intense. Almost go shark eyes on these guys. Oh, um, I don't know. It's uh, fuck, it's high pressure, high pressure, mate, high pressure. Lot, lots and lots. It's heavy. When you win, Joe, you know what the wind's buzz, buzz. Yeah. It's like amazing. You can't explain the wind, but you go, whew, it's over with. Do you know what I mean? It's like the pressure. <laughs> the it's the the valve relief more than anything else. For about a week, and then they go, oh, do you want to do? <laughs> trying to do another one in 10 weeks and you go yeah fuck it why not yeah oh mate you've got to be a little bit sick in the head to be doing that do you know what I mean uh, a little bit a, you've got to be a little bit gone haven't you I've got I'm 29 now I've come to realise I'm probably a little bit gone uh, all the best guys are all the most talented guys in the world are I suppose I'm not mm. saying I'm the most talented guy in the world but I'm obsessed I'm, I can say that with my whole heart I'm obsessed with the game of violence how long do you think until you're um, competing for that belt? Well, obviously, within a realistic time frame, um, because, you know, someone might turn around and be like, want to compete for the belt tomorrow, which obviously everyone does. But, like, what do you think is a realistic time scale for yourself? Within, I would like to say within within two or three years. Within two or three years. I feel like that's fair. If I was to sit here and say 12 months, and you've only had three fights in Bellator, we're a bit like, come on, mate. I feel like within, that doesn't mean it's going to take me three years. I mean, within three years, I believe I'll be, be there or thereabouts, in my opinion, with how hard I'm working and um, the, the ladder I'm, I'm climbing. But I just feel like one fight at a time and I'm going to deal with uh, Monkey King first and then we'll go from there. But that's, that's the dream one day is to get the, the world weight strap. No doubt, change my life, change my family's life, and change this this town's uh, combat history. We have a world champion. We've not we've not had a Bellator world champion in. Oh, I think we had one. I think we had like Liam Liam McGeary, the light heavyweight. But I think he was training out of America at the time. I think he was the world champion for a bit. But I mean, there's none now, and I want to be the why not the first one to do it. You know, from from. Yeah. from why not? Why not? Someone's got to do it. Why not me? I, I, I look at these guys and I'm just like, I'd have a good go with all of them right now. All the top mm. guys. You'll be, um, you'll be bringing that belt back and bowling it around Aces Town in it with a strap over your shoulder, <laughs> doing the Billy strap. <laughs> Day, I'll take it off for two weeks. I sleep with it, eat with it, bath with it. The lot it ain't yeah. coming off. <laughs> that would be fun. Funny, mate. I'd love to see it. Do you know what I mean? It's going to happen, so it's all, it's all good. I, I believe it's going to happen. Like, you know, otherwise, I'd be yeah. fucked up when I just sitting here going, Nah, mate, you're never going to get that world title. I'll see you later, oh, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? I know, you know, we've seen their fucking hard work going in there. That eventually, that, that dream's going to become a reality. Mm. One day, mate, one day, one fight at a time. Look, like I'm saying, I'm, I'd love the title. My opponent would love the title. All these top guys, like, but one thing at a time. And right now, my I'm tunnel vision on the monkey king. I'm tunnel vision mm. on him. You know, nothing else matters by him. What's your um, What's your take on like uh, doping within like combat sports? Because we've obviously seen it coming out in boxing quite recently. Um, mm. And what's like Bellator? What's their like testing standards? Do they 
are you regularly tested? Like, I don't really know the full ins and outs of how it works and all of that shit. I mean, so I just they're want not, to ask you. Yeah, I mean, they're not as, um, like, they don't do as much as UFC, obviously. Mm. Uh, they're on it all the time. But, I mean, for me, my opinion is, uh, it's a hard one. I feel like it's, it's, it's cheating. It's definitely cheating. Mm. Um, but what do I think about it? What do I think? I, um, I know what you, you mean. Like, obviously, it's cheating and it's hating in performance and stuff like that. But it, there's two like mentalities, isn't there? Like, people will go, "Oh, it's so fucking wrong to do." But also, you've got to, I think, understand from a perspective that for some people, the fear of losing is so much worse like do you know what i mean i'd rather i'd, I'd potentially take like, a little drug here and there or whatever that's going to aid in my performance because i i've got that fear of failure so bad um but then in the same sort of conversation is that if you're going to be doping and taking whatever substances that are going to aid your performance and your opponent isn't then someone could get seriously hurt and i think i can't remember who said it a long time ago but someone was like just make doping legal because then you're just going to have like the yeah. highest performance yeah. fucking properly yeah. uh, uh, the highest performance possible so it's like you know it's hard to navigate through so I understand yeah. why it's I think it's cheating I would never do it personally mm. I just feel like it, uh, I'd feel weak mentally that I've had to take this thing to enhance myself I'd yeah. feel weak mentally I feel like it's cheating um and uh, yeah, I'm just I'm a bit old school with that. I feel like do it the proper way, the honest way, and just work your ass off. And um, yeah, just, that's it. If you have to cheat, then how do you oh, sleep yeah. with that? Well, they, they, these fuckers will always have a, an excuse for something and always justify something. Oh well, I took it because of this and that, mm. mate. I'm I'm literally give me some tape. If anything hurts, I tape it up. I don't need a drug for it. I'm gonna be mm. honest. I'm just going to work my ass off. And for me personally, I just think it's a, it's a scummy way. In bodybuilding, different. Yeah. You ain't hitting no one and kicking on for a living, yeah? When you're like yeah. wrapping shins around people's heads and you're on drugs, for like, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. That's my. No, no, that's fair. That's okay, my opinion. That's you ask me my opinion, that's my opinion. Yeah, no, I like, I, mate, as always, you've got to be direct with things, innit? You know what I mean? Like, right. um, you know, I think jujitsu, like, there's quite a lot of doping in jiu-jitsu i don't think it's even really regulated oh, at all they're all, all juicy yeah i'm tempted bro. I'm like, hey, get me on bro, the gear work on your technique yeah but yeah. take loads of trend loads of trend bench as much as you can but work on your technique bro mm. fucking ridiculous ridiculous <laughs> no the, well, that's how you fucking jesus boy yeah i'm and tempted mate i'm tempted i'm not like down at the blue belt competition so <laughs> Don't touch that shit, man. Don't just eat well, eat well, lift, train hard, and you get, you get, you get good. You know, mm. you don't need that shit. There you go, uh, fucking Sunny dropping the line there. Hillbilly Hammer, don't need that shit. Crack me up. Um, so what do you do to like unwind as well? Because I know I check your social media quite a lot. I see you training, fucking pretty much all the time. How do you? relax and unwind because you need to talk for your brain for your body to recover a little bit and so on so yeah what's your sort of routines around that what are you doing to to chill out well chill out i like to spend time on missus and um just watch some watch some films i'm just a normal guy watching tv watch some films chill out walk a dog, dog maybe <laughs> the little shit bag yeah. you know um, no, i'm joking um just chill out and watch some <laughs> films i say that and then i end up i'll, I'll put fights on and i'm like fuck Turn them off. Turn them off, do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, just chill out. I like to watch films, mm. you know. Maybe go for some dinner. Got to slow down on that now. Now I'm uh, four weeks out. But, yeah, I like I like films, going out for some walks along the seafront, getting a coffee and just being a normal lad for five minutes and just trying yeah. to get about for five minutes. It's hard, but I try. Do you, um, like, because a friend of mine, when he watches 
so he was boxing. But when he used to, he never used to really watch boxing fights because he just, like, I don't know why, he just said, I can't stand it. I can't walk, like bear watching boxing. Why? And even though he loved the sport of boxing, he just didn't like watching it. I don't know. He just said, like, I just don't like doing it. He just feels like off. He's like not really interested in shit. But I'm like, it's your sport. Like, why, why don't you want to watch it? And I was just wondering for you, like, do you find yourself getting like hypes and built up watching like UFC more than the traditional guy? Like when I watch it, I'm like, oh yeah, sick. Yeah. But like for you, are you doing that, um, you know, that Conor McGregor video where it's like, jab, roll, uppercut, <laughs> all that shit. Well, well listen, bro, <laughs> yeah, right now I'm on this podcast, you look. Oh, lad. Do you know what I mean? I, it's on all the time. I'm, I'm learning yeah. all the time, doing my homework all the time. Um, I love watching fights. I can't really watch boxing that much anymore. I, I can, mm. but I'm not overly fussed. Um, I love, but MMA, I watch all the time. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. Think... Really, boxing, uh, boxing bores me a little bit. I'm just like, why are they kicking him? Why are they taking him down? Mm. You know I mean, let's see some real fighting. Let's see some. Let's see some grit. You know what I mean? Just punch, punch, break away, grab, and uh, I don't know. I can watch. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think the UFC um, and like MMA and Bellator and one are, are slowly sort of t- taking over? boxing because boxing now we see like fucking two fights a year that are half decent do you know what I mean with the top level guys whereas I use yeah. like the UFC for an example Dana White just seems to get like the matchmaking like perfect do you know what I mean he's like number yeah. two versus number yeah. three or number one versus number two and so on he does it I hate him or love him but um, MMA they want to make great fights whereas the boxing the boxing world they want to protect their boxers they want to make their boxers 30 you know, fight 30 bums have one tough fight and retire with all the belts and all the money. So you barely see any decent fights. Um, I feel like boxing is, it's not dead. It never will be dead, boxing, especially in England. Boxing's huge in Europe, but it's slowly getting a bad, like everyone's talking about it. Like these YouTubers making all this money and these, you know, and, and these top boxers doing fuck all. And like we need, they need to do something different. Something needs to be changed up with boxing because MMA has taken over, 100%. Mm. Boxing's, it's not dead, but I don't know, like everyone I know, and or like even the general public I talk to, they talk about MMA, they talk about Bellator, talk about UFC. No one really talks about what fucking uh, Joshua's doing. No one really cares, yeah. you know what I mean? But, yeah, I don't think it's dead, and I think it ever will be dead, but... Um, answer this question who's winning Leon versus Colby listen I'm with Leon all day because of the UK mm. uh, but it's a it's a great fight it's a great fight I feel like if Col- Kobe can use his wrestling and, and pin Leon and it's I feel like Kobe could nick it but it, Leon's got good defensive wrestling and good c- cage control and cage craft so it's it's a great fight but I'm with Leon on that one if that whether that that guy is yeah, Leon. Someone. Yeah. Now, honestly, bro, with, um, I was just touching on the Leon thing as well, actually. He makes it look so effortless in there, doesn't he? You know why? Because he's been doing it forever. Mm. Forever. Watch a barista make you a coffee. Like, me and you. Yeah, that's you, true. Me and you going and fuck it up. Do you know what I mean? But he's done it, done it, and done it, and done it. That's why he's been in the game so long. Been in the game so long, and. Um, when people p- people say that to other people and talented people I've seen, and it's because, in my, my opinion, it's because they've done it over 10,000 times. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all it is. There's no secret, mate. I don't I don't believe in... There's, I believe, in, to a certain point, there's talent. But I've, I've seen talented guys before, and I've seen them go away, and I've never seen them again, and I've seen them fade. They're lazy. The guys who... A talent and the hard work, they're the ones who are going to stay. They're the ones who are going to make it look effortless, easy, smooth. Do you know what I mean? Because they work hard, they understand that the grind. Look at John Jones. Look what we said the other month. Be the guy. Be the guy in the grind. You know, and that and that just gives me great. It it like gives me what's the word? Like it makes me like feel at ease when I'm working really hard. So like, right, okay, well, I'm doing, I'm checking it off. 
every day, chipping away, checking it off. And I'm like, well, okay, what did I do today? Well, I ran, I did this, I did that, I did this. So I know in my heart that I've done enough for the day. When I haven't done enough, I feel like a piece of shit. And we've all been there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've, all, you've all missed that session that you should have went to and you feel like a piece of shit. So, but yeah, that's for me, that uh, answers that question. Yeah, the mental game is mad, isn't it? Like when we, mm. I think it's so underappreciated, in my Ma opinion. Like mass I don't think it's spoken mass enough. Massively, massively. Um, mate, the last in the last year, my I, I still have wobbles. Mate, I'm a I'm a big enough guy to sit here. I'm a strong enough guy to sit here. I don't care if he sees this. I really don't care. I don't care who sees this. I'm a big enough guy to sit here and say I still wobble. I have days where I'm like fucking hell. This is a bit much. Maybe let's just go and get a good, like a, a normal job and train here and then. I can't, I can't do it. I've tried that life. It ain't for me. It's not enough. But yeah. um, the mental game is huge and I'm way better at it now. Trust me. My belief in myself is way better. When I'm on, I'm on. And I'm telling you what, you could put Terminator and King Kong in there with me. I'm coming out. I'll be coming. I'll be the last one out of the cage. You know, mental. Yeah, Mentality. It's, I don't want to go too much in the mental and don't want to bore everyone And but uh, there's a few di different things this year I've done for my mental and they helped me a lot and uh, a lot to do with that but wherever you got wherever you got I'll, I'll take it have you got because um, I'm, I'm sort of fucking all out of uh, topic points here I think we've actually been going for like 45 minutes and I haven't even realised I'm that's which is mental. It's flown by. Um, is there anything you wanna wanna add in there at all, or anything you wanna touch on? Um, if not, obviously we'll we'll leave it as is, and I'll get this uploaded onto YouTube, and I'll leave it on Instagram for people to tune in and watch it at a later date. No, mate, that's all good. It's brilliant, mate. Brilliant podcast. It's good to talk to you as always. I just want to thank all my sponsors: TNL Tires, Dentry Scaffolding, uh, Refresh. The MP, a new one from Eastbourne. Um, who else we got? Raw Performance, always having my back. Uh, who else we got? Sorry, Sunday, I can't remember now. Right <laughs> uh, uh, Novo Jiu Jitsu, always having me. You know what I mean? Um, the same, my secret weapon, the Iranian gangster, taking me on the pads every single day. Um, yeah, Novo, BJJ, all the boys that help me down here. Everyone helps me. I appreciate it. Um, and you'll all see all the good work unfold on May 12th in Paris. Typical Alex Salisbury joining at the last minute, do you know what I mean? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he would do. He thinks it's all about himself, doesn't he? It's <laughs> pretty, <laughs> Turn up late to his own. Team. Bike rides and eating steak, the good life. What's up, Al? Smash your face. Smash your face right in. Come, or anyone wants to come rolling six o'clock today, raw performance. Let's go, no gear round. Hey, Jay, you got a session up there, yeah. Come, come. It's, like, it's, it's no session, it's, like, it's only for G's, but you can come. All right, done. I'll, I'll, I'll be up. Today, yeah? <laughs> I'll be up at six today, I'll message you about it and sort it out. Yeah, brother. Hi, Ruby. All right, brother. Peace, sweet. man. Thank you, bro. Yes, Take sweet. I appreciate that. I'll speak to you in a bit, all right. Cheers, bro. Bye, man. Take care.